in this video, I want to introduce you to the concept of non-destructive editing within Photoshop. So ex to explain this, what I'm going to do is some destructive editing, if you like, to this photo I've got here of this Captain America statue. So I'm just going to run a couple of effects on this. So I might decide I want this photo in black and white and I want it a bit brighter. So you have a whole bunch of effects you can run under the image menu up here. So I could come up here and go to adjustments and then you can see under here I can change things like brightness and contrast, hue saturation, I've got a black and white effect, all sorts of other stuff we can get into later. Uh, but I'm just going to run a couple of these now. So first thing I'm going to do is run brightness and contrast. So with that up, I might just boost the brightness a bit. So just make everything a little bit lighter. Maybe I'll just push the contrast up a little bit as well. Click OK. That effect will run and apply to the image. With that done, I might decide I would prefer this in black and white. So I'm going to go back again. Image, Adjustments. And for this, I'm just going to use a hue saturation. So with this effect, what I can do is just use saturation and just pull it all the way down to zero and that effectively just sucks the color out of the image. And so now I have a black and white image. Now, both those changes have applied one after the other and they're locked. So if I now save the file, I can't go back from that. This will now be a black and white file and there's nothing I can do. If I decide later on, oh, I wanna go back and change the contrast and I prefer to do that before it was black and white. I can't do that. I've locked things in. So the way to do this is to work with features in Photoshop that let you do pretty much 90% of the kind of actions you can take in Photoshop non-destructively. So I'm going to undo both those effects. So if I go up to edit, I've got undo hue saturation, which will roll back the black and white. And then if I go into edit again, I can undo the brightness and contrast as well. And so now I'm back where I began. Worth mentioning when you're working with Photoshop, if you feel like you've marked up and you don't want to step back through the sort of undo redo history there, you can actually go under file and there's this option revert, which will take you back to where you were when you opened the document. So if you find you're really in trouble and you just want to bail out, you can go file revert. Another thing I'll just quickly touch on before we move to the non-destructive stuff is there's also this option history. So this history panel actually stores every single action you've taken since you've opened the document up to a certain amount. So it uses a lot of resources, memory on the computer to keep this history. So it might keep, say, the last 50 op uh, operations you've taken, and then you can undo and redo through that history if you prefer doing it that way. I don't tend to use the history panel that much. I pretty much just do undo, redo, and work with it like that. Having done that, I've reapplied our effects. So let's just go back to open. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do exactly the same thing, but I'm going to do it in a non-destructive fashion. So this is where we're going to start working with the layers panel over here on the left. So the idea with layers is when you're looking at your image here in the sort of main work area, what layers expose is the idea of a stack of images or parts of images that are on top of each other from you know top to bottom. So if I wanted to type text on here, draw a box on here, I can add those as individual layers and work on them independently. So this is gonna become a really, really important concept. We're gonna do a lot of work in layers um, and layers can get confusing. Now, as well as being able to being able to add layers for things like text and boxes and other images, you can actually add effects as layers. So the same two effects we just applied, the brightness and contrast and the saturation, I'm going to add as effects. So there's a tiny little option down here. If I take my mouse all the way to the bottom of the screen, you'll see there's this little icon here. And if I hover over it, leave my mouse there, it says create new fill or adjustment layer. If I click that, then a whole bunch of options pop up. And you can see some of these look familiar. So I can select brightness and contrast. 
And now it's added this funny brightness and contrast layer on top of the photo layer. Now you'll see how some of these panels kind of work together because now I've added this brightness and contrast layer. There's controls for it under this properties panel that I've got shown next to it over here. So as I click between these two different types of layers, you can see the properties panel changes based on the type of layer I've got selected. So with this brightness and contrast effect added, I can come in here and do those same changes I made earlier with the destructive effects to increase the brightness and bump the contrast up a bit. And those settings have effectively been applied within that layer. They're stored as that layer. So if I click off of that and click back, it's going to have those how I, however I set them up. Now I've got that, I'm going to apply our black and white effect by coming down here again to that same button. Click that and I'll click that hue saturation effect. You can see the properties panel changes again. You might remember seeing the dialogue when we ran the effect up here had the same controls. So I can just grab saturation there and pull that all the way down to zero and I've got the same result. So obviously there's a lot of other controls, a lot, a lot of other icons and buttons. Don't worry too much about those at the moment. This is more to just understand some of how non-destructive editing works within Photoshop. Because I've now added these both as effects, I can now go back and tweak them independently. So I could choose to go back to the brightness and contrast, push that way up, and it changes independently of the black and white. I could also decide, hey, I don't really want this completely black and white. Maybe I want just the faintest trace of color on it. So just bring that saturation up a little bit and you can see there's just sort of hints of the original color seeping back in. So this is the power of non-destructive editing. Another thing I could do is in the layers panel, panel here, I'm gonna come down the bottom again. You can see over on the right here, there's this button. This will create a new layer. So if I click that, that's completely empty. There's nothing on it. Now what I'm going to do is come over here and I think I'll select the brush tool. And that's going to just load up a kind of default kind of brush to paint with. And at the moment, it's going to paint with this green color that's selected down here in the toolbar. So don't worry too much about these settings. We'll do another video on how to change those. But I can now say paint over this image and you can see that paint layer is between the photo and those two adjustment layer effects. So what's happening here is both of those adjustment layers are applying to everything underneath them. Now, another little concept. There's this icon here next to each of the layers you've got in the layers panel that let you turn them on and off. So if I turn off both the brightness and contrast adjustment layer and the hue saturation adjustment layer, we've effectively got our image as it was when we started. And we've got this green color I've just painted on, which you can now see matches the color here in the sort of color picker. So by turning those two effects back on, you can see how they've applied to both that little dash of paint I've added and the photo beneath it. So all of that is because of non-destructive editing. There's a lot of other concepts we'll get into that enable you to do things in a certain way that will preserve your ability to go back and make changes should you wish to. This is something you just learn over time that there are certain things that you may want to lock in and apply immediately. Sometimes it just makes sense to make a little contrast adjustment and not really worry about um, whether you want to change it later. Sometimes you may want to paint directly on a layer or an image um, and not worry about having to undo it or go back from it. But for the most part, it's best to think about how can I work non-destructively so that if you do need to go back and make changes, you've got the capability to do so. Head to toyshooter.com for more tutorials, resources, and help with Photoshop compositing. You can also subscribe to my free newsletter by visiting shoot.toys in your browser or clicking on the link on screen. 
You can also follow my work on Instagram at instagram.com slash shoot.toys. Subscribe to the channel to watch a special subscriber-only video, which you'll find on my channel page after subscribing. Lastly, you'll find links to all the places I've just mentioned in the description for this video below.